If I was asked to ask you to list the 10 most pressing problems facing the world today, what would you put on your list? Population growth, world conflict or world peace, resource depletion, maybe food and water security, maybe world health or poverty. Maybe you'd look at it in terms of environment as uh, species loss or pollution or climate change. In your list, you may have some other um, things as well, or you may have expressed these ideas in a slightly different way. I don't think there's any doubt, but these are really pressing problems that we need to find solutions for in the future. If I was then to ask you a question, is there a technology or a change that we could introduce that could help us solve some of these problems, alleviate some, or at least giving, give us some breathing space to find time to solve the others? What might that technology or that change be? I think that a low-cost renewable energy source is possibly one of those changes. Certainly, it would allow us to address climate change and pollution straight away. It would also impact on water security because we could have local water purification. It would impact on food production, storage and transport. In health, it would impact in many ways. For example, vaccine storage and transport. And for the others, maybe it will buy us some time, some critical breathing space so that we can find economic and social solutions for those really tough problems of conflict and growth. The world currently uses about 15 terawatts of power. That's 15,000 gigawatts. And it's projected that by 2050, we'll need at least another 10 terawatts. Let me put that in another way. That means we need to open one new gigawatt, gigawatt sized power station every day for the next 27 years. These are a huge challenge facing the world. Solar. Sorry, this is, yeah, solar is one of the few technologies that may be able to solve this problem. But solar is, diff is expensive and it's diffuse. Modelling for the Melbourne Energy Institute that has indicated that you would never install solar unless you're going to use the output immediately. It is simply not cost effective in most cases to install solar technologies to drive a, a storage system. We'd like to change that, but we also need, you know, we need a new paradigm for energy generation. So what are we doing? We're printing solar cells in plastic. That's right, in plastic. Most people think of plastic in the terms of drink bottles or children's toys or that insulation around cables. We obviously use special plastics to do this. 35 years ago, it was, uh, shown that you could pass electricity through some polymers and their conductivity was as high as some metals, like copper and silver. Over 20 years ago, researchers at Cambridge University found that if for some plastics and polymers, when you pass that electricity through them, they glowed, they gave off light. This was the invention of organic or polymer light-emitting diodes. Those LEDs you have in your house, you can make them out of plastic. And of course, if you can put electricity through a plastic and get light out, can you put light into a plastic and get electricity out? And you can do that. And we use very, very special plastics to do this, a mixture of N and P type organic materials. So in, it's a new technology. And in the laboratory at the moment, we can actually make organic solar cells with efficiencies up there with some of these silicon technologies. 105 to 12.5% efficiency. But this is a new technology, and we're designing new molecules and materials every day to improve that performance. In the laboratory, we take a piece of glass, two centimetres by two centimetres. And on that, we assemble five or six solar cells, organic solar cells for testing, each one two millimetres by five millimetres. They're not going to cover your house. So in a parallel program, we've been translating that technology to a potential industrial process. We've been taking those two by five millimetre solar cells and we've been translating that process to a continuous printing process. 
on a 10 centimeter wide web. So initially we cut off those solar cells, make 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter modules so that we can test them and analyze them. So we spent a lot of time understanding the printing process. We spent a lot of time optimizing the printing process. We spent a lot of time formulating those specialty plastics into inks to print. We've taken all the hard steps. We've solved them. We've taken this laboratory technology through to a continuous printing process. Now, if we want to print larger solar cells or more solar cells, all we need to do is to buy bigger printers. And so we've recently purchased three new printers for our program. And, <clears throat> and so to print on plastic film, glass or steel substrates. It's important to realize that these are commercial printers, off-the-shelf printers that everyone can go and buy. We've been up now, we need to optimize the printing process on these new printers. Our new standard module is A4 size. Now this is cut from a roll of continuous printed organic solar cells. What we're doing now is to optimize the printing process on this material, on these printers. Once we've done that, if we want larger solar cells or more solar cells, all we have to do is to buy bigger printers. With commercial printers now having two and a half to three meter wide webs and print speeds of two to 300 meters per minute, the potential for large scale solar cell production is enormous. We actually think this might be part of that paradigm shift in energy generation. So what do we do now? What can we use these organic solar cells for? Well, obviously, we want to scale up the process. We want to incorporate, embed this technology into building products and commercial uh, consumer products. We want to print these organic solar cells on roofing material, on canvas, on shade cloth, on awnings, so that when you build your house and you put on your roof, you automatically install a solar array. When you go camping, you put up your tent, you can charge a battery. If you roll out your awning or put up a shade cloth, you are generating electricity. And we also want to embed this technology into other products, like water purification, distillation or reverse osmosis, and use the energy to purify drinking water for the millions and millions of people around the world that do not have daily access to clean drinking water. But of course, if we have a low cost printed organic solar cell, the possibilities are endless. Imagine taking carbon dioxide from the air and transforming that into a liquid fuel. Sounds unrealistic? The technology exists to do that today. Look at solarfuels.com. The only thing you need is a low cost renewable energy to drive the process. And what about wearable sensor arrays? with integrated communication, power generation, and storage. With printed organic solar cells, they become possible, and these technologies are being developed in the laboratories around the world today. As an example, at the last Materials Research Society conference in San Francisco, a wearable sensor array was used to demonstrate remote control of a model helicopter. The next stage would to be uh, integrate that with a power generation and storage device, which are also being developed around the world. We really think this is a, an exciting new technology, and it's being rolled out now, low-cost printed organic solar cells. And we certainly hope that you can join us in our journey as we develop this. I only have one more question before I finish, and that is, how will you use printed power? Thank you.